Okay, so here we have the ruck. That's the small sluice and the small fluid box. That's the large sluice. Each bag has its own uh, mats and everything in it. This is all the pumping equipment, interchangeable. And that's it. All right. In here, if the bank is steep, I've got a collapsible ladder. I have my bed. This is my toilet. That's all the components and that's the, the bowl. In here is my classifiers and my uh, buckets. I've got one battery here. I've got a backup battery up underneath the bed up there in case I'm out for more than, than four or five days. All of my shovels and picks and everything packed down here, including my pumps. And then those three bags will stack here. This will stack on top of it. So once I'm at a stream, all I have to do is I pull this out, I set it up. I pull out the bag and pull out what I need that gets packed into a separate transport bag specifically for that. I pull out whichever particular tool I need and I just roll it all down. That's it. So yeah, it looks like I've got a lot of stuff However, when I'm taking it down to the stream, basically like if I was needing to use the uh, small sluice with the pumps, I would pull the pumps, I would put it in the one bag, and it's done. If I need it with this one, I pull it into one bag, and it's done. If I'm going to be using both of them in tandem, making a two to three meter sluice, both of those bags just pick up and set on, all three of them would set onto the the buggy, uh, the wheelbarrow, to get carried down. Everything's made out of aluminum, so it's fairly lightweight. I don't have to tear my back up because the main thing I have to worry about with my leg and my nerve damage and everything is I might be able to get it down to the stream, but what condition am I in once I get there? And then at the end of the day, what condition am I in to get everything back? So... I have to minimize and optimize everything as much as possible. Today, we're going to be discussing probably one of the most controversial, or most highly discussed, at least, issues in gold panning, which is equipment selection. Now, you're going to go in, you're going to, there is a basic thing where everybody says, ah, oh, Go gold panning. You know, it's so cheap. Well, if you're going to go gold panning and it's so cheap, then why all of this? Okay. The reason is every sluice, even if it's made the same way, every stream can change day to day. None of them will operate exactly the same. Now, if you want to go the inexpensive, uh, dirt cheap method, what you do is you get yourself a uh, plastic bucket. Boom. You get yourself a colander or a uh, strainer, whole, whole size depending. So you've got the strainer, you've got the bucket. That's maybe, what, five, six bucks? Then you're going to need yourself a shovel, a pick. Depending upon the stream, you may need a crowbar and a uh, pan. I have my preference on what I like to use, but this is an assortment depending upon the stream and the material that I'm working. Now, my backpack will contain at least, it will hold the small, the small and the medium pans. It will hold the two shovels. That's a foldable shovel, so I don't have to carry the big one. Okay. And all of that goes into there. That's my primary prospecting stuff. The uh, bucket. Hello, tractor. 
uh, the bucket and the classifier, if I'm just doing panning, I may not even use those. So the only other thing that I have is one of my uh, one of my uh, hose here, one of my pry bars, and I'll use that as my walking stick and cane as well because of my uh, my back issues. So a backpack, a pan, a shovel, a little scooper, and a uh, something to move those larger rocks and so on with. Yeah, you could get away with. 40 50 bucks especially if you scunge some of the stuff from the house all right however the key to finding gold the main key to finding gold is not only just knowing where it is but the amount of material that you move all right the amount of material that you move equates to how much gold you will find on any given day if the gold is there and in what quantities. And there's um, lots of YouTube stuff on calculating uh, uh, gold per yard and all of that. There's plenty of stuff on that. But what we're discussing today is efficiency and collectability. Now, case in point. No stream will operate the same. I mean, I've worked one stream one year, came back, and the entire bar and everything, the gravel bars and everything had changed due to high water. I have went out and worked a stream one week and come back a month later, and there's hardly any water there. You could not really get anything to move through it. Uh, I would be at one stream where the water was really high, so I was having to use an aggressive mat and really lift my sluice off the ground and then I would go back later and you'd have to dig out a trenching just to get the water to run through. So once you've done your research and you've went down and you put boots on the ground and I've taken this is my basic testing stuff. I would go out and I, this is what I would use to test pan and to mark an area uh, using my GPS on where I would want to actually go. Now, once I have my area and everything is panned, then I will know from the water side, the, the water flow, the uh, depth and everything, on what any of this that I would be taking with me. Just for this sluice section alone, all of this is... All of this is interconnected, by the way. All of it's inter, uh, interchangeable. I can work with it on most cases. Uh, but just this sluice alone, this section, these are all the different mats that I would use depending upon the water flow. And you'll notice those, those are different sizes because the different sizes would equate to which mats I'm using here to fit into the sluice. When the water is real low, I am currently making a pump, which, let me go over here. This is my pump. This will sit here. Then I've got a 750 gallon per hour and a 1,100 gallon per hour 12 volt pumps. That would attach and it would move my water through here and then down my sluice. So if I had very low water, then I have a way of still working that stream. Mind you, because of the nature laws, some places will not allow that. So what I may have to do is if the water's real low and I can't get it to move, I go to my 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 uh, smaller sluices, wider flanges, it will move the water in and capture more, move it faster over a smaller area. So I don't need as much water flow to work that. And then on this, I have a whole assortment of mats that goes with this section, as well as this combines and can become a uh, fluid box 
or a bazooka as a lot of people call them. So I have mats, I have fluid boxes, I have, that's a feeding unit, so I just dump everything in and I can go back and it will self-feed itself. Got various pumps. Here I have different classifiers that I made. And I've got to make one more. This is a five millimeter. And I'm going to make a uh, one that's half this size for the real fine gold on the Rhine. Then if I'm doing crevicing, I've got a small hand pump and I've got a larger pump. This one can either operate alone or it attaches to the bucket via a hose. And as I pump it, it just fills the, fills the bucket up. So again, depending upon the stream. Now, the thing is, I've had a lot of people who have got, that's a lot of stuff. I would never carry that much stuff to a stream. And in fact, neither do I, okay? What I would do is once I've done my research, once I have done my boots on the ground, I know how far I have to travel from the vehicle. I know the terrain. I know the water depth, the approximate water speed, the size of the, the rock that I need to classify. I have all of that information. Then I will only pack the particular pieces that I need to go with me for that stream and that stream's conditions on that particular day. All right. This maximizes and optimizes the amount of gold I can pull off of a stream. It will give me an assortment and variety of what I need to use for that particular stream, depending upon its water depth and water speed. Again, if you if you're if you want to get into to the mathematics and so on. One video I highly suggest watching is go to goldhog.com and watch Doc's video on proportional force. Actually watch it about three or four times. And this will explain to you a lot better detail on map selections and what you want to use. In my personal opinion, if you're going to go for real fine micro gold, miner's moss, and a uh, sheet covering, you cannot go wrong with that, okay? And then I go from, we have the, the real small matting all the way up to some of this more aggressive gold hog matting, razorback and so on. So once again, I'm not going to tell you one sluice is better than another. I'm not going to tell you that this works, this mat works better than another. Because in actuality, it depends on the stream on what you want to use or what you actually need to use. So, basic equipment. I would suggest, that's a little pump that I, I got. It was one of those things that has the rubber on the end of it for unclogging toilets. I took that off, I drilled the inside out and it works really well for getting into those uh, just basic areas. And I can carry that when I'm in it with my, uh, that can fit into my rucksack. But you would need something to carry your materials in. You would need a pan, a shovel, okay depending upon the shovel size and what you want to do with it. I highly suggest some type of a crowbar or a whatever to sometimes you'll get digging down in there and there's these big stones and there's no way you're going to get your fingers in there and lift it out easily. And the, the long handles come in really good for getting that applied leverage to get that stone out of there and save you from having to dig around and all of that sort of stuff. So, this is my basics. Yes, these are my basics. However, once again, I'm only going I'm only going to use or take to the stream with me the very specific pieces that I need. Now, how do I do that? 
Well, I can carry it all by hand, but what I did is I've got a small collapsible wheelbarrow. Solid rubber wheels. This opens up. I can, if I need to, I can put my battery in there. I can pack in whatever gear, tie down my uh, shovels or whatever, and literally just stroll down at my pace and leisure one trip down to the stream. So, I like the gold hog matting. However, I've had to, in some cases, make some dramatic modifications on it. This little stuff here, you can buy it in rolls. Whoops, that's out of the channel. This little stuff here, you can buy that in rolls and uh, cut it to shape and size. Most of the other stuff you can get at hardware stores. These classifiers I made, okay? That's a 19 millimeter, a five millimeter, and then I'm gonna take it down to a, a 1.5 or two millimeter. The pump I made, but you can buy those. Again, it depends on your, your cash flow. Now, why do I have two separate pumps? Two separate pumps may be the point if I'm using, say if I have this set up as a high banker, you'll notice I've got legs for these things. Okay. These are my legs. All right. And my legs fit into here. Now, the way that I have this is it's designed that while it's loose, I can actually angle the angle of, of that so it can fit into the stream. Then these will dig down into the gravel. It holds it in place and the added bonus is I'm not having to stack rocks or anything underneath it to try to get my angles. All of that is adjusted by the leg settings. Okay. I do have... Um, you'll see a lot of people... Hang on. All right. Now, um, you'll see a lot of people when they're hauling their stuff around. They are... Um, having to dig out rocks to uh, level their sluices. They're having to find rocks to pile up to hold the sluice in place. Otherwise, the sluice will literally, the water will grab it and it will take off and float downstream. Uh, I got the, some of the rivers, like if you go to the Rhine and so on, some of those places don't have big rocks to deal with. Okay, and if you're working in the water, like on a feeder stream off the Rhine or off the... Uh, Ezar or off the awls, um, it can still pick it up and carry it off. Now what I've done is, you know, I have the, the, the feet that are sticking up. I just got back, so ignore the mess. What I've done here is these are weight training bags, all right? And each one has 10 pounds of sand in it. All I have to do is take that handle and loop it over one of the legs on any of my sluices, and it acts as my ballast, one on each side. Once again, I'm not, I'm not backpacking and hand carrying everything down. I've got it in my little trolley so I'm good to go. I bring these home. I let them hang for a day. They drain out if they get overly wet. It's got water resistant bags in it. And then I can just lay this in the oven for an hour or so on a, a very low heat with the door open and it dries it right out and it goes right back into the, into the vehicle the next day. I am thinking about taking the inner bag out 
and putting it and sealing it in a water resist a water um, not a water resistant but a uh, totally uh, waterproof bag and then sliding it back in and that'll save a lot of time on that one so Matt Prop proportional force video watch that goldhog.com very informative your mat designs is going to determine based on the proportional force the river depth the water depth the speed the angle all of that is going to determine which mat you're going to use for any particular stream on any given particular day because a stream can change one day to the next so all of this stuff sits in my car okay and it stays packed in my car so I only take out what I need to go down to the water now if the next day if I'm down for a weekend or three or four day holiday or whatever if the water level has changed or whatever all I have to do is come back up and change out the parts that I need and I can just keep going and you'll notice some of these videos, you know, they're they're down, the water's high, they're trying to take in a bank to sluice against a tree on the on the edge of the water, uh, trying to throw rocks on it. All of okay, all of that is bypassed because I have built-in legs on all of my stuff. Alright. If it's really fine, fine gold and it's running so slow I can't do anything, what I do is I go to my fluid box because it's got a slick plate and it's going to run right down off of that and into the into the box and get captured more medium to a fine gold again depending upon the water would be either my uh, my six inch sluice or my 10 inch sluice okay Depending upon the water speed and which sluice that I'm using would depend on which mats that I'm using. Depending upon the gold, size of the gold would depend upon the mats that I'm using. All right. So your basics, a pan, a shovel, something to carry it in, and you're off and running. A sluice triples, quadruples, depending upon how it's set up, it massively, um, it massively accelerates the amount of material you can move on any given time. All right. I'm down to the point that the, this this stuff can actually process more material than I can physically dig at any given time. All right, I've got it that optimized that by the time I get a a, a bucket half filled with uh, material, I can pour it into the hopper, and it's fed before I take and get the next bucket. All right. And that is mainly because of my uh, my back surgeries and everything. I can only move so fast. So this gear is now as optimized as I need it because it can actually process material faster than I can provide it. It could literally, if I had two people, work, if I had one person working with me, we could keep that thing running and full all day long by alternating between uh, classifying and digging. So that allows me to run two to three times more material through it than I would on any given day trying to dig it, classify it, and then hand, uh, hand put it into the sluice as you see a lot of people doing. The sluice, uh, the feeder works both uh, uh, using a pump as well as I can set it up on a lower setting using my different uh, connectors there and the water itself will there goes the tractor again the water itself will um, 
then wash it and carry it down. And I don't have to use a pump on a particular stream if, if it's not allowed. So this is the basics on tools. All right, you can go as minimalistic as possible that you want, which is a small foldable shovel, your uh, pan, and that's it. But you're not going to move a lot of dirt. And if you're not moving a lot of dirt, you're not finding a lot of gold. All right. So I hope this has at least been semi-instructional for you. Again, I would watch the, the proportional force video at goldhog.com. Then you have to determine, one, of course, finances. Two, if you're only going to be working a particular stream or a series of streams that are close enough or similar together to make it minimum to need changes, then get a sluice, or there's plenty of videos out there, make a sluice corresponding to what will fit for you. But you cannot do that unless you know the streams, you know the water, and you understand the proportional force on what you're going to need to move that material. All right? Best of luck and good hunting.